strong. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10, you've got to make it in your mind that you're going to be strong. If you don't do that, you'll be taken down as a minister. You'll be taken down as a servant of God. You'll be broken into a thousand pieces and left in the dirt because you did not enter the battle realizing that you had to be strong. Ephesians 6 verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You've got to be strong in the Lord. You've got to get into, the, into God and get strong in Him. If a bishop tells you that you shouldn't be preaching, if a, a local minister's fraternal and you go there and most of the ministers are liberal and don't believe in the Bible and they shun you, you've got to be strong. You've got to strong in the power of his might. Ephesians 6.10 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You've got to be strong. You can't be intimidated by a bishop who may look down at you because he thinks you're sound in the faith and he's a liberal and he is feeling antagonistic towards you because he knows that he should be preaching the Bible as the word of God and he hasn't been doing it. You should not be intimidated by local ministers who do not believe the word of God. How dare they intimidate you? Who are they to intimidate you, a man of God who is standing on the word of God and believes it as the word of God? Be strong in the word. Be strong in your God. Ephesians 6, 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The enemies of God are railing against ministers of the gospel. They are coming against the ministers of gospel and trying to intimidate the ministers of the gospel. You must be strong in the Lord and resist the opposition. For you are there set before the people in your local congregation by God to do a work. And whatever opposition comes to you, God commands you to be strong. Paul, Romans chapter 1, 16 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God up for salvation for everyone who believes. Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation of everyone who believes. So often in major denominations, Orthodox ministers will tiptoe around and almost be that they're orthodox, that they are evangelical, that they believe the Bible is the word of God. Ministers today in the climate of the church are scared to be bold for the gospel because, oh, we don't do that now, minister. We're, we're into the emergent church. We're, we're into postmodernism now, minister. We're trying new ways to do church, minister. We want children's services, minister. We don't want your preaching, minister. We've got new moralities coming in that the government's put in, and we want to put it in our church minister. We, we, we're not into that anymore. It's out of date. We don't want the, this word preached to us anymore. And so the ministers, the preachers of the word, are, are intimidated by this secular culture and the secularization within the church. And ministers are tiptoeing and they're ashamed to preach. And many of the retired ministers who have preached the word of God faithfully are made to seem as made to be seen as if they're dinosaurs. And what is happening, my friends? We have we are listening. We are listening. We are listening to the Philistines. Yeah? We are listening to the Philistines who were taken away. Our heritage, you were taking away the glory of God. We are listening to them. And so, old ministers who preach the word, rise up and be strong and do not be ashamed. God called you to preach the word of God. And even though you are a retired minister, you have a wealth of experience and you must give it to the church and you must preach the word of God. And if you're a young minister today and you've gone into the ministry, whether it be the Anglican, the Methodist or the Baptist and your local superior officer, whether it be a bishop or a superintendent, looks down on you because you're an evangelical. 
dare not be intimidated by your bishop or by any of your area reps if they are liberal you be proud in the God of your Bible and in the Word of God and in the gospel proud in a humble sense if you know what I mean do not let the Philistines put you down do not let the Philistines make you feel timid there is only one God there is only one gospel it is the only way to be saved and if all the bishops stand against you and say that it is not the gospel then you stand against all the bishops if all the superintendents in the Baptist denomination say the Bible is not the Word of God you as a minister will stand against them because God stands with you and one man is a majority against a thousand bishops or a thousand ministers who are liberal you stand for God against the Philistines you sound an alarm for truth you proclaim the word of God fearlessly no matter what comes against you stop tiptoeing around your denomination stop tiptoeing around your church as a minister preach the word of God for the glory of God I say to you do it they are not going to pat you on the back they're not going to say our minister is bold for Jesus I am not telling you to go out and cause problems against your bishops I am not calling you to to have problems with your area reps I am not doing that I am telling you in the name of God you be not ashamed of the gospel do not be ashamed of Christ do not be intimidated by the enemies of God do not be intimidated by the Philistines do not be intimidated by them they may throw you to the lions they may throw you in prison they may take away your ministry they may kick you out of your manse they may take away your salary they may de destroy your reputation but at the end of the day I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation and at the end of the day you are called by God and God is with you and you have a responsibility to proclaim that word and stop tiptoeing around everybody and be bold for Jesus amen that goes for the Calvinist that goes for the Arminian that goes for the charismatic you are all called to preach the word of God you get back into that pulpit and stop being intimidated by the liberals stop being intimidated by the secular culture stop being intimidated by the Philistines who don't want your preaching and you preach it you get back into that pulpit and you lift the voice for Jesus and you lift it and you preach it okay you preach it and you never be intimidated again I don't say go around cocky I don't say go around thinking you're something because you're nothing I say go around and don't be ashamed of your faith don't be ashamed of your Lord don't be ashamed of the Word of God yeah you preach it my friend never let a bishop put you down never let a superintendent put you down never let any congregation put you down if they don't believe the Word of God if they don't believe it on them you stand there and you're a servant of the living God and you have to preach his message yeah so you get up there and you preach when you're you students in the seminaries and you're hearing your seminary professors ripping into the Bible because they don't believe in inerrancy and they try to make you look stupid and you have students in your seminary that are not evangelical laughing and mocking you you don't have your head down as if it's shame no you hold your head up high because you are a servant of God I am not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God for salvation unto everyone who believes and every theological student who's been intimidated by seminary professors who couldn't preach if they tried but they are clever and they have these clever ideas and they attack the Bible and try to make you look stupid don't you be intimidated as a 
so one can say. Just because they can quote Derrida, just because they can quote feminist theologians, just because they can quote the latest th philosophical fashion. So what? It ain't going to save a soul. It's only gospel. It's only Christ crucified. It's only him dying on a cross and shedding his blood for our sin. It's only him that will save us. And that's the only message that the church needs. Christ crucified. A ten-year-old boy could preach it. You don't need a theological education at the end of the day. It's helpful. I've got one. My friends have one. I'm not against it. But don't be taken in by your seminary professors who think that their knowledge is what you need. You need to learn from what you can from them. But at the end of the day, if they turn that knowledge against the gospel, then you stand with the gospel and you don't be ashamed. Amen. It's time you stop being ashamed. It's time you started be, being bold for Jesus. The Philistines have come in. How dare they come in and make you intimidated as a minister of the gospel? Who are they? Who are they? Who are they? We stand with the living God. That's who we stand with. And he's with us and he will give us strength and power and he will give us hope and he will give us peace and he will look after us and he will be with us. Who are these seminary professors? Who are these bishops? Who are these superintendents who will come and stand against our God? Who are they? They're nothing. Their ideas and opinions will be out of date within 10 years. Our gospel will always be up to date and a living God and bring salvation to souls. Amen. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Come on now, get your Bibles out. You reformed preachers out there, get your Bible out and let's get into the Word of God, eh? They attack the Bible and try to make you look stupid. Don't you be intimidated as a what can say just because they can quote Derrida just because they can quote feminist theologians just because they can quote the latest th philosophical fashion so what it ain't going to save a soul it's only gospel it's only Christ crucified it's only him dying on a cross and shedding his blood for our sin it's only him that will save us and that's the only message that the church needs Christ crucified a ten-year-old boy could preach it. You don't need a theological education at the end of the day. It's helpful. I've got one. My friends have one. I'm not against it. But don't be taken in by your seminary professors who think that their knowledge is what you need. You need to learn from what you can from them. But at the end of the day, if they turn that knowledge against the gospel, then you stand with the gospel and you don't be ashamed. Amen. It's time you stop being ashamed. It's time you started be, being bold for Jesus. The Philistines have come in. How dare they come in and make you intimidated as a minister of the gospel? Who are they? Who are they? Who are they? We stand with the living God. That's who we stand with. And he's with us and he will give us strength and power and he will give us hope and he will give us peace and he will look after us and he will be with us. Who are these seminary professors? Who are these bishops? Who are these superintendents who will come and stand against our God? Who are they? They're nothing. Their ideas and opinions will be out of date within 10 years. Our gospel will always be up to date and a living God and bring salvation to souls. Amen. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Come on now, get your Bibles out. You reformed preachers out there, get your Bible out and let's get into the Word of God, eh? You pastors out there, you Christians out there, you get your Bible out, let's get into the Word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. 
For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Yeah? God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love and of sound mind. Stop worrying about your insecurities. Stop worrying about what people will think of you as a minister. Stop worrying about your reputation as a minister. Stop worrying about what people think of you. Who cares what people think of you? Worry about God and realize that God loves you, God's with you, and God is going to bless you. It doesn't matter what the enemies of God are doing to you. It don't matter what people are doing to you, saying about you, thinking about you. No, no. You look to God. You be happy in God. You be rejoicing in God. And stop being timid. Yeah? Stop being timid. Stop worrying about your insecurities and what people think about you. Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 12. 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 12. Verse 12, be of good courage and let us play the man for our people and for the cities of our God and the Lord do that which seemeth him good. Let us play the man, let us be of good courage. Oh man, my, my friends, it's time for courage. It's time for courage. If ever the church needs men with courage, it is now. Joab was outnumbered. He was outnumbered. But oh, he was a man of courage. Psalm 27 verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Come on. How big are the enemies that are against you today? How big are they? Are they big? Have they been winning? Have they been beating you up? Have they? Have they been beating you up in the church? Have they been winning? Have they desecrated your reputation? Made you look a fool in your church? Have they won? And now you fear? The Lord is the light, is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? You've got God and he is your light and he is your strength and he is with you. You do not have to fear as a minister. Let them stamp your reputation to the ground. Let them win because they are fighting God. And when God sees fit at the right time, he will vindicate you, my friend. Though your reputation be in the dust, you will rise out of the ashes when God tells you, tells you you will rise. Just like a big, great um, whale that may have been pushed down by a great big ship. And the ship goes and then suddenly the whale just comes swooping up and jumps out of the water. So you will rise. And be vindicated. Haggai chapter 2 verse 4. Haggai chapter 2 verse 4. Haggai chapter 2 verse 4. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel. Said the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Zechariah, the high priest. In the land, said the Lord, and work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. Work. Be strong and work, he says. Ye, not, ye now be strong, O Zerubbabel, says the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Zodak, the high priest, and be strong, O you people of the land, says the Lord, and work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. You know that. You know the passage. You know the background. The work of God was in a mess. The enemies of God were triumphing. 
And God said, work and I'm with you, work and I'm with you, work and I'm with you. Be strong and work for I'm with you. Minister, work for God, work for God. Come on, preach the word of God. Get working for him. Preach it, brother. Come on, keep working for him. Serve him. Preach the messages. Teach the Bible. Come on, have a heart for your work. Be strong. Yes. Revive yourself. He's with you. God is with you. Now work for him. Build the church. Teach the word of God. Redouble your efforts. Preach the word in season and out of season. Come on now. Go for it. Work. Yes, the secular nations are getting worse and worse. Yes, the enemies of God in the nations are getting bigger and bigger. Yes, the church is, is becoming apathetic. But now God says, work. Work is with you. We can turn the tide. We can see God going to bless. We can see souls going to get saved. Now, come on, work, minister. Work. Come on. Get those commentaries out. Get into your commentaries. Get into your Greek and Hebrew Testament. Come on now, minister. Come on. Get working. Get preaching. God is with you. He's going to bless you. Come on. He's going to give you strength and courage. Come on, work. Come on. Do not be disheartened, gospel preacher. Now work for him. Preach it now. Come on. Preach for the word, for the word. And do not be disheartened. Do not be discouraged. Matthew Henry said, we have no sufficient strength of our own. All our sufficiency is of God. He'll bless. Or we could go on. Let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4, 17. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Chapter 4, verse 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that I had known and that all the Gentiles might here and I was delivered out of the mouth of lion. God stood with Paul in his ministry as he preached. My dear preacher, my dear pastor, he's standing with you right now in the ministry and he will not forsake you and he will be with you right now. Wherever you're pastoring, wherever you are preaching, he will be with you and he will supply your need and he will be with you. So preach and be strong. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 and 11. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 and 11. Have I not... Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wherever thou goest. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare your victuals, for in three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go into the possession of the land with the Lord your God has given you to possess it. Joshua had marching orders. Go on. The next thing we need to do is not be fearful and then know our enemy. Understand the opposition that we face. So, we've got to know our enemy. Who is the enemy? Ephesians chapter 6, 
verse 11 and 12. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. Ephesians 6, and 12. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rulers of darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. When we're in gospel ministry, the enemy is the spiritual dark forces ultimately. They're the ones that are trying to pull our ministries down, not people. People might try and do it, but it's the enemies of God behind them. General Ulysses Grant said, the art of war is simple enough. Find out where your enemy is, get all Get at him as soon as you can. Strike him as hard as you can and keep moving. Our enemies are spiritual. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You see, it's prayer. Ultimately, our battle is fought on our knees in prayer against these dark forces. We could go on. Let's turn to 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7. 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 7 Moreover he must have a good report Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour The devil is vicious and he's out to destroy your ministry All the forces that come against us are satanic, James 4, 7. When the devil attacked the Lord, he defended himself with the word of God. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 and 11. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 4. When Satan assaulted the Lord, the Lord defended his ministry by the word of God. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. When the Spirit, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterwards a hungered. When the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil take him up into the holy city on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him if thou be the son of God cast thyself down for it is written he shall give his angels charges concerning thee and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest any time thou dash thy foot against the stone and Jesus said unto him it is written again thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God again the devil take him up into an exceeding high mountain and showing him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. He fought the battle, the Lord fought the battle with the word of God. But we can't underestimate the power of the enemy. We don't want to overestimate the devil. We only want to underestimate him. Corrie ten Boom said the first stop of the way to victory is to recognize the enemy. So how do we defeat the enemy? How do we defeat the demonic forces? 
where we've already looked at the importance of the Word of God. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 6. And you all know this. Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, my brethren, verse 10, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherein take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having gone you shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith wherein you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit watching therein with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints put on the whole armor of god did you notice there there is no retreat when a Roman soldier had a shield and had a sword, they were not going to retreat, they were going to advance. The armor of God is given to you for you to advance and take en enemy ground. But you have to do it on the basis of God's resources. You can't do it as a minister in your own resources. You can't do it purely on apologetics, purely on your intellect, purely on your know-how. You need the spiritual wisdom and spiritual equipment of God. Now I know you know this, we can do things in the flesh and not do them in the ministry of the word and how God wants us to do it. If you have failed, welcome to the club. If we turn to Romans chapter 13, verse 12 to 14. Romans 13. Romans 13, 12 to 14. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in cha chambering and wanderness, not in strife and saying, but ye put on, but put ye on the Lord Jesus and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Let us put on Christ. We need the belt of truth. Are you feeling it? We need the belt of truth. Ephesians 6.14 We need to be willing to stand up for truth. Let's turn to Jude chapter uh, Jude verse 3. Jude verse 3 Beloved, when I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should err once delivered for the saints. We contend for truth. We fit ourselves with the gospel of peace, Ephesians 6, 19. We have faith, the shield of faith. We need faith in the ministry. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 to 7. If we don't have faith, we're going to sink. If we don't have faith, we're going to fall. If we don't have faith, we're going to be discouraged. We need faith. Faith to believe God is with us. Faith to believe God will give us strength. Faith to believe God will vanquish our enemies. Faith. We need faith. We need faith. Hebrews 11, 7. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of the things not seen. For by it elders obtained a good report. Through faith we read by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel appeared unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By 
which he obtained a witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, by it being dead, yet speaketh. Yeah, the whole chapter of 11 of Hebrews is by faith. Faith, as a mustard seed, can do great things. Matthew 17, 20. You need faith when you've sowed the seed to believe that God is going to bless it. Matthew 17, 20. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for I verily say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence in yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible. We've got to have faith. Faith is centered on Christ, Galatians 2:20. Faith rests on God, 1 Corinthians 2, 2, verse 5. Faith is precious, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. And faith is confident, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. We live by faith and not by sight, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. And we could go on and on. Faith, you need faith. You need to also grasp salvation. If you're not in love with the gospel, if you're not in love with Christ, then what are you doing as a minister? Have you got so bogged down in reading theology books that you've lost the joy of your salvation? Ephesians 6, 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and of the helmet, for the helmet and helmet, here it is, the hope, the hope of salvation. Have a good grasp of the gospel, for that will give you strength. Then you need the armor of the word of God. You need to hide the word of God in your heart. Psalm 119, verse 11. Oh, this is a wonderful, 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 wonderful. Psalm 119, verse 11. Are you feeling your privilege, brother? Psalm 119, verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not. The word of God is flawless. Proverbs 30 verse 5. The word of God is God breathed on faith. You need faith. You need to also grasp salvation. If you're not in love with the gospel, if you're not in love with Christ, then what are you doing as a minister? Have you got so bogged down in reading theology books that you've lost the joy of your salvation? Ephesians 6 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and of the helmet, for the helmet and helmet, here it is, the hope of the hope of salvation. Have a good grasp of the gospel, for that will give you strength. Then, you need the armor of the word of God. You need to hide the word of God in your heart. Psalm 119, verse 11. Oh, this is a wonderful, 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 wonderful. Psalm 119, verse 11. Are you feeling your privilege, brother? Psalm 119, verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not. The word of God is flawless. Proverbs 30, verse 5. The word of God is God breathed. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16. Jesus is God's word. Revelation 19, 13. The word of God brings salvation. Romans 10, 8, 9. And 8. Romans chapter 10, verse 8 and 9. The word of God will never, ever pass away. Matthew 24, verse 35. 
The word of God is to be obeyed, James 1.22 and the word of God achieves its purpose, Isaiah 55, verse 11. Let's read it. Isaiah 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I pleased, and it shall prosper the thing wherein I sent it. My friend, as you proclaim it even if men reject it it will prosper then we're to pray then we're to pray in the spirit no matter how complete says Albert Barnes the armor no matter how skilled we may be in the science of war no matter how courageous we may be we may be certain that without prayer we shall be defeated. I'll read that again. No matter how complete the armor, no matter how skilled we may be in the science of war, no matter how courageous we may be, we may be certain that what, without prayer we shall be defeated. We need to be praying for each other. 1 Thessalonians 5.25 1 Thessalonians 5 25 yeah 1 Thessalonians 5 25 brethren pray for us brethren pray for us we need to pray in crisis Acts 4 29 And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servant that with all boldness that they may speak thy word. So they're praying in a crisis. They're praying as the gospel is being stopped. They pray against that. So we need to pray. We need to be wrestling in prayer. Mm, so we come to the end now. What have we talked about in this last part? We talked about the fight, not to underestimate the battle, not to be intimidated by the enemies of God, to realize that we need the armor of God, and it's so important. And we need that peace of God in Ephesians 6.14. Ephesians 6.14 Ephesians 6.14 Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And then verse 15, and your feet shed with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We need to walk in peace, to know that God gives us peace. That God isn't going to leave us or forsake us. And as we have peace, we will be able to stand in the midst of the storm. One writer said, no battle of any importance can be won without enthusiasm. Napoleon Bonaparte said, victory belongs to the most persevering. Winston Churchill said, never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. <laughs> yeah. Reformed pastor or preacher or whoever you are today, if you're in the ministry or if you are doing ministry, whatever that is. I've given you some things to think about and I hope it's challenged and encouraged you. Now go forward in your ministry and listen to these words by John Wesley and then we'll close in prayer. 
He says, I want to know one thing. The way to heaven. And how to lay, land safe on that happy shore. God himself has condescend to teach the way. At this very end he came from heaven. And he had written it down in a book. Oh, give me that book. John Wesley. As a pastor, as a preacher, you've been given a book, the Holy Bible. You are not called to give your opinions. You are not called to give your ideas. You are not called to bow to secular culture. You are not called to bow to the secularization of the church. You are not called to bow to the enemies. You are called to proclaim that word faithfully. You are called to proclaim all of the word, no matter how much the world might hate it. That is what you're called to do. That is what I would call a reformed pastor. A reformed pastor is a person, a man, who is faithful to the word of God, who is an ambassador of the word of God. He will not change the message because he is but will proclaim the word of God faithfully the way God wants. So, preacher, be encouraged. You've been given a great task. Maybe you've been beaten up emotionally by your congregation or by your leadership team, and maybe you're in bits at the moment. Maybe you've fallen out of the ministry. Maybe you've fallen into sin and left the ministry. Maybe people have pushed you out of the ministry. Maybe you're going through a difficult time right now in the ministry. I hope this video has been a help to you. But one last thing. Preach the word. Preach it in season and out of season. That is what he called you to do. So get on with it. And let devils and men scream all they want against you you're answerable to God so proclaim it for his glory and the need of all men and women boys and girls to come to know the living God thank you for listening and God bless you I'm going to close in prayer now and I think that'll be my final bit today and um, I hope it's been a blessing to you. I don't think I can do any more today. I'm quite tired now after after that. It was a preach. Let's come before the Lord. Oh God, we come before you today and we're mindful of our own failure, our own sin. We acknowledge in our own areas we have made mistakes and we have done things in the flesh and we have not... And we confess that, Lord. We recognize, Lord, that ultimately you want intimacy with us. Without intimacy, we can do nothing. You want us to focus on you, not on the problems, but on you. You want us to draw close to you. You want us to bear fruit. You have given us the way to bear fruit. And you have called us to battle. You've not called us to walk timidly, but to walk boldly in the grace of God. And so God, we come before you today, realizing how desperate we are, that we need all your resources. We are reminded that without your resources, we can do nothing. And so, Father, we pray in the coming days and weeks ahead as ministers of the gospel that you would give us the resources, that you would equip us, that you would prepare us for the next phase of our ministries together. That as brothers we would stand together, we would work together, we would support each other and sisters for, the, for those who are, are doing um 
youth work and things like that and other ministries but for all of us who are doing ministry in whatever way we pray that we would stand together and support each other to proclaim the Word of God Father forgive us our failure and our sin forgive us our weaknesses forgive us our foolish ways so Father we thank you for this day and we thank you for your grace and love Every person today who hears your word with your love may they know your peace and joy and strength now may they know your help in ministry bless their ministry strengthen them enrich them and encourage them and be with them in all that they do bless them Lord in your name and for your glory may many many thousands millions of people get saved in these coming weeks and months ahead may our ministries be used to spread the gospel help us Lord for we are weak and frail in Jesus name Amen Amen I hope that's a blessing um, I don't think I'll be doing any more uh, tonight so um, I think I'm going to call it a day now and uh, I hope that's been a blessing to you and uh, thank you for listening and God bless you if you want to as a pastor to teach your people to preach or be in ministry then feel free to use this video or uh, mirror it on your site if you want to use it to help people to go forward in ministry so uh, thank you for listening and God bless you